OK, so this is a feature that we introduced earlier this year. Um, every customer, I would say 9 out of 10 customers that we talk to about SD-WAN, they are talking about the SaaS applications. How can you help? Just like public clouds in the previous section, it's about SaaS, Office 65 keeps coming up in almost every other conversation. What do you do for SaaS? So we have done a lot of things here. So one thing is to figure out which path, which last mile circuit performs better. When it comes to SaaS, it's much more than that. For instance, O365, they have front door locations in 180 locations across the world. And you have to figure out using APIs, which IP address belongs to them, because they keep changing those IP addresses. You can't rely on traditional DPI mechanisms to figure out which one is uh, which application. So we integrate with them as well. And we actually have layer seven probes, HTTP GET request that constantly goes on every available path. When we say every available path, it's just not the local paths from the branch. You may have a couple of ISP circuits. In addition to that, you may actually have a regional head and location, which has an internet exit. We actually probe on that path as well to figure out which is the best possible exit for this specific SaaS provider. And that way we know beforehand. When the client request comes in, let's say you open up a laptop, I am connected to uh, the employee network, and then go to 365 SharePoint. And then um, the gateway already knows, at this point in time, um, the first exit is the right exit. So the, my DNS queries for that service, since they are actually intercepting all of the DNS queries, are routed on that best performing path. If you don't route the DNS queries from the employees or the users on the right path, you're not going to get the right response. Because different providers, uh, they have different pairing models. They actually route it to different, dif different front door locations of Office 65, depending on their pairing model. So since we already know upfront which is the best performing provider to reach that front door location, when you go DIA for those SaaS providers, we intercept the DNS and route the DNS as well. That way, your performance for SaaS is always the best. And whether it's local paths, or it is actually going to a regional head end, um, that works really, really well. And this is an example of an Office 65. So we have two paths here, and uh, both providers have their own DNS service. So first thing we do is HTTP probes to Office 65 front door locations. They actually are hosting a probing endpoint for SD WAN providers, which we are leveraging, and we are partnering with them as well. That way, we get the best metrics from each of the branch location. And, uh, we optimize the DNS routing as well when the client DNS comes up. And lastly, we have to have those first packet classification. That way, once we know, uh, once the client opens up, we are not waiting for the DPI to figure out. Rather, based on API, we know this is SharePoint, this is OneDrive, this is email exchange, Outlook 365, so on and so forth. So that's something we have turned on, and it's been super popular. So why don't we take a look at it? Yeah. Um, let me switch. I'm number three. <laughs> So first of all, I want to look uh, just, just like, we, like we did before with uh, DPS. Uh, let's look at how it's configured, OK? So for each uh, of my critical applications, and what Manny was, uh, was saying is, yeah, these I'm going to give special care to. Um, I define an SLA policy, OK? That SLA policy is going to look very similar to the DPS, to the SLA policy that we defined for DPS, latency, jitter, packet loss, uh, usage on the uplink. Um, we define an exit profile. The exit profile is, is going to tell us what do I prefer. If I prefer the, this circuit, I prefer this other circuit. If I just load balance and just pick whichever one uh, gives me the service, what URL am I probing to and which domains are associated to that URL. Okay, so the result of probing to this URL applies to all, this, uh, all these domains. Once we have that ready, uh, the system it's just a matter of selecting, actually. If you see, out of the box, we have the top 15. We keep adding every quarter as we understand more from customers on what SaaS services matter for them. You just have to select from in terms of, I care about Adobe services. I care about Office 65. We just select it. All these are pre-programmed, uh, and you just know that which FQDNs we are probing. But you are not actually configuring any of this. Your job is just select which SaaS service. But we are providing you visibility on how we are actually doing it. If you want to add an extra FQDN, to be probed or uh, to be intercepted, you could actually add that as well. Yeah, we would just add the different FQDNs and the uh, URL, and we'd be good to go. So how does it look, how does it look like? Um, we have a set of policies, a set of applications that are critical to us. And we're going to look at, at our gateway. And it's telling us, OK, for uh, Salesforce, your quality of experience has been uh, up and down uh, through my broadband LTE, which is my preferred. It's still within my, my threshold, so I'll stick to that because I, uh, I have it uh, within my threshold. But uh, yeah, it's probably not the, 
the best, uh, not, not the best uh, of my circuits. As we can see here for Office 365, I think we stopped probing that one uh, yesterday. For uh, fast internet, we're doing pretty well. We have a quality of experience of nine. We have, uh, latency is a bit high, but for SaaS applications, that's fine. Jitter is very, very low. There's no packet loss. So it tells us at any go moment in time, how is our application doing and why am I choosing this path over this, over this other path? The number one request we get for SaaS is just reporting, right? So how many SaaS applications are running in each site? What is the average quality of experience? One thing is to go deeper into loss, latency, jitter, if you're troubleshooting a specific problem. But when you're reporting, let's say you want a weekly report to figure out across all of my locations, thousands of them, <coughs> for these five applications, could you send me the user quality of experience report? It sends you a report in terms of which paths are you taking, what's your average QoE, and some of the KPIs that we truly track here. That becomes very, very important for customers just to get that SaaS visibility. So are you guys, and, um, question. Yeah. Are you doing something in conjunction with like what Thousand Eyes does in terms of like actually being able to see hot pie of flow, flow configuration? So that's that's pretty useful on the SaaS <coughs> side, right? Once we leave the site into the internet backbone, and right? So because I mean, that's the reality is is that once you jump off, the latency is actually introduced for most folks. CDN delivery service or bad internet peering. It could be just a branch site problem. It's not an actual end-to-end -end site topology problem. There's I agree. still up. So how do you handle that? Or do you integrate someone like Thousand Eyes directly in and say, I can use that telemetry to actually make a decision? Yeah, integration with Thousand Eyes. We have customers running Thousand Eyes for that visibility along with this. We, we don't have visibility into a hop-by-hop -hop internet where exactly is it a CDN hop, is it a front door, right. um, that we have been thinking, but so far we've been integrating with them. For us, we just track the end-to-end -end metric all the way to the SaaS application. So we can tell you whether it's a LAN problem, with the LAN problem, is it Wi-Fi or LAN, or is it a VAN circuit, which circuit? You can't, you can't, you can't actually know if it's a correct. delivery problem from the That's SaaS correct. Provider. Once you know it's an ISP problem, you can't see where exactly it's happening. So right. we, we've been thinking about how to solve that, not there today. All right. 